Hi guys, I cannot tell you how excited I am to get a chance to talk to you today. So thank you for coming and thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy this. So let's get one thing out of the way. I bet you that before you heard of this talk, you didn't realize that veterinary ophthalmology even existed, right? I mean, a doggy eye doctor? So let's get two of the most burning questions out of the way. No, dogs do not wear glasses. And no, they cannot read an eye chart. But nonetheless, I still have one of the coolest jobs on earth. So this is me about five years ago, looking at a 500 pound lion. And he had scratched his eye, his cornea, which is the surface of your eye, on a branch in his exhibit. So they asked us to come in and they asked us to take a look. And as you can see from this picture, he's under anesthesia and those are breathing tubes that are coming out of his mouth. But I have to tell you, I was still a little bit nervous when we climbed into that cage with him. And I had taken some students with me that day to look at this lion, and we were all nervous. And we were kind of giggling and probably talking a little bit too loudly just because that's what we do when we're nervous, when the zoo vet said to me, hey, stop, everybody listen. You need to look around this cage right now at the ladders on the walls and on the ceilings and each and every one of you needs to plan three escape routes because I cannot guarantee you that I can keep him under anesthesia. So we got focused. So what is veterinary ophthalmology? Well, it's the same thing as human ophthalmology. So we're dealing with the same diseases. So things like corneal ulcers, a scratch on the surface of your eye like that lion had, or maybe glaucoma, which is a high pressure inside the eye, or even sudden blindness. We have retinal disease. And just to bring everybody up to speed, I put a picture of an eye up on the screen for you. So at the front of your eye is the cornea right here. The middle of your eye is the lens. The lens is the clear focusing part of your eye, and that's what helps you see near and far. But if you get a cataract, that turns to a white cloud, and you can no longer see out of your eye. And then you have your retina, which is in the back of the eye. And the retina is the part of the eye that sends the images that you see in your world back to your brain. So it's kind of like the pixels in a digital picture or the film in an older camera. Some of the patients that I see on a daily basis, this guy's one example. So this is a 13-year-old female spade miniature pincher dog. And her owners brought her in because she's suddenly gone blind. She'd absolutely lost vision. And you can look at her eyes and see that there's a problem. So she has a cataract in both eyes, this white cloud in both eyes. And it turns out as we started to ask them more questions, they revealed to us that she'd been drinking more and she'd been urinating more. And what that means is she's actually gotten diabetes. And those diabetes gave her cataracts. The good news about cataracts is that we can fix them. So there is a surgery that we can do 
to get this dog's back, vision back. And this is her a week later, and she's able to see again. That surgery is the exact same procedure as your mom might get or your grandfather might get, but the difference is I have to put the dogs under general, an general anesthesia so that they're sleeping when I do this procedure. This is the surgery just as a quick step-by-step. -step. Technically speaking, it's called phacoemulsification, emulsification and then we implant an artificial lens. The first step, think of it like a little probe going into the eye with a jackhammer, and it breaks up that white cloud that you saw in that miniature pincher. And then once those pieces are tiny, I can suck those out, and then you have a clear eye again. And if everything's gone great, I can insert an artificial lens back into place so that when that dog wakes up, not only can he see, but he can focus perfectly. We had a very cool opportunity at University of Pennsylvania last year where a team from Animal Planet came and they followed six of our students over their senior year. What was the neatest thing for me is that they came to our rotation and actually captured a cataract surgery. Now, of course, as luck would have it, it was going to be one of the hardest cataract surgeries of my whole life, so you can imagine how nervous I was. But I did a quick one minute clip for you guys so you can watch a little bit of that Animal Planet show. This is the coolest part. You don't want to want miss this part. And there's your artificial lens. All right, you guys made it through. Okay, you guys, so you made it through and you got to see what cataract surgery is. That's a live cataract surgery. I gotta tell you, one of the coolest parts of my job is when those animals wake up from anesthesia and we get to reunite them with their families. So they walk into our hospital and they are scared and they are bumping into everything and they don't know what they're doing. And that evening when we reunite them with their families, it is one of the most rewarding experiences of my whole life. This guy is Duffy, and you might have seen him on YouTube before. So Duffy was so scared before cataract surgery when he was blind that he actually bit me by accident twice because he was so frightened. His family, when I finished the cataract surgery, I brought Duffy down um, to, the, to the waiting room to have him greet their family for the first time. He hadn't seen them in two years. They filmed that on their iPhone, and then they posted it on YouTube. And they called me about a day after they had posted it and said, hey, Dr. Beal, you might want to pay attention. Something's happening. And it had had, it had, had about 200,000 hits. So I went to bed, and the next morning I woke up, and I checked my phone, and it was up to half a million. And in the next three days, we hit 2 million, 3 million, 5 million. This thing went viral around the world again and again, and I'm proud to say that it's at 14 and a half million views so far. So I'm not going to show you this video today because I want you guys to go home and I want you to put it into YouTube, Duffy C's family, and send it to everybody you know, and together we can hit the 15 million mark by sending it around the world a couple more times. So then last year, I had another great opportunity. If anybody's been to the Philadelphia Zoo, you might notice that there is one condor there. So she is an Andean condor. She's 62 years old. She has been at the zoo since the 1960s. And the zoo called and they said, we have a really big problem and we are very worried about the quality of life of this animal. She's hanging out in the corner. She won't come out to her exhibit. We have to hand feed her. 
Now, if any of you guys know anything about condors, they are huge birds with a 10-foot wingspan. They can pick up a wolf on the fly. And that was not what princess, princess's life was about anymore. So as luck would have it, when we looked at her, we realized she had cataracts. We did surgery on Princess, and we removed that cataract. And I'm happy to say that every time I go to the Philadelphia Zoo now, Princess picks me out of a crowd using her vision, spots me, and charges at me. So how do you get a great job like this, you guys, where you wake up every morning and you're excited to go to work? I will tell you that the secret is to find and follow your passion. So if you ask these leaders of these big companies like Starbucks or like Facebook, what's the secret? The secret is to find something that you love to do. So if you ask the leader of Starbucks, Howard Schultz, what his passion is, he won't tell you it's coffee. It's really important that he makes good coffee. But to him, the most important part is actually to provide excellent work environment for his employees so that they can provide excellent customer service and everybody walks in and walks out of that place happy. So you might be looking at me being like, great, I don't have a passion. What am I supposed to do? Well, what I would tell you is that look at all of your interests and just explore them. If you love what you do and you do what you love, something will hit you. And it might not be tomorrow, and it might not be in three weeks. It might not be till you're 35 years of age. But if you keep doing the things that you love, something will come to you. So what's my passion? Is it eyeballs? Nah. I like putting eyeballs back together. I love the medicine and the science, and I love fixing things. But my passion is taking a family who is scared and nervous because their dog has suddenly become blind or maybe is really, really painful and their eye hurts really badly. My passion is helping that family understand the medicine so that together we can make a plan and move forward to a place of peace so that they feel comfortable moving forward. So you start with a love of animals. This is my daughter when she was three, figuring out where to put a stethoscope on our dog. <laughs> and then you take a love of science. So when I was just a little bit older than you, our teachers said, we're going to have a science fair, and you guys get to pick any question you have and explore it. So I thought, you know, it's kind of funny how when I drink different things, I have to sometimes go to the bathroom a lot, and sometimes not so much. So, so I thought, I'm going to get all my friends together, and I'm going to make them drink different things, and then I'm going to have them collect their urine in cups over the next two hours. So I asked for volunteers. And I didn't get any volunteers. So I made my family help me. And my mom drank a liter of Diet Coke. My sister drank a liter of Coke. I drank a liter of water. And my boyfriend drank a liter of salt water. So it turns out that all of these things actually have to make you go to the bathroom a lot. But if you drink the salt water, you feel so terrible that you won't finish the experiment for your girlfriend. So how did I get here, you guys? I gotta tell you, the path to your dream is not always glamorous. So my first job, I picked up a lot of poop and I cleaned a lot of cages. And if you have a cat, you know that bathing cats is not high on the cat's preference of a Sunday activity. It's a good Sunday activity. The biggest part about this job is that it started that summer at five o'clock in the morning every single day. But the pathway gets better. And I got jobs at the New England Aquarium and the Baltimore Zoo. And this is a story of how I learned that the human impact makes a big difference. So this is the New England Aquarium. And below, the penguins swim. And above, there are cement walkways for all of the people to walk around and look at those penguins zipping below. And there are signs in the New England Aquarium. And they say, please do not eat food. Please do not run. Please do not chew gum. That last one's really important. And people don't listen. And they look over those cement walkways to those penguins who are swimming down below, and the gum falls out of their mouth. And the penguin swims around and thinks that's a pebble. And she picks it up, and she brings it back to her nest, where she's been incubating a very precious egg. And that gum sticks to her feathers, and the feathers stick to the egg. And the next time she gets up and takes a step, she cracks the egg on the rock. So we had been degumming these penguins in the back. We had been taking them in the back, pulling the gum off. It's not fun for the people doing it. It's not fun for the penguin. And we realized we could make a difference at that point. 
So we built a glass wall so that the people coming to the aquarium could see. And what they saw was the consequences that their actions had created. And they stopped chewing gum so that the gum wouldn't get on the penguins. So let's keep going on this pathway. Undergraduate, the first, the first step. I got into my dream school, Dartmouth College, and I was playing two varsity sports, and I was pre-med because that's pre-vet, and I was trying to hang out with my friends, and I hit a wall, and I started to fail a course for the first time. And I realized that we can't all do everything. So I want to tell you guys today, even though I, my greatest dream was always to become a veterinarian, it's okay to stumble. So I dropped that course, and I stopped playing lacrosse, and I got back on track, and I got focused, and I got into vet school. So let's do a grand tally. Undergraduate, four years. Vet school, four years. So we're at eight years, right? But you can be a veterinarian at this point. But if you wanted to specialize on something like eyes, it's going to take a little bit longer. So another year in an internship, and then another three years in a residency studying only the animal eye. So grand tally of 12 years. But remember what I said. If you're doing what you're loving and you're loving what you're doing, you can enjoy the journey. This is me trying to restrain a 21-foot python who had been bitten by the rat that had been put into the cage that she was supposed to eat. And we had to sew her back together. So this might not be everybody's day in the dream world, but this, this day I was in heaven. And who wouldn't want to play with piles of puppies, right? So there was one day in vet school that I'll never, ever forget. So this dog is a dog named Thor, and he is a cop dog, and he has a partner. This day in, my, in our senior year of vet school, where we were in the emergency room, and there actually wasn't much going on. So we were just kind of hanging out and trying to learn some more things in our senior year, when suddenly we heard some sirens. And that's strange because dogs don't usually come in in an ambulance, right? So we heard the sirens, but they started getting closer and closer and closer. So we ran to the front of the building at the University of Pennsylvania. And we pulled, op pulled open our doors just as an ambulance was pulling into the driveway at Penn. The back doors flew open, and on the stretcher was a dog, and there was blood everywhere. And the IVs had been started, so the medics that he was brought in by had already started IV catheters in both of his forelimbs, and they were trying to pump fluids in him to save his life. So we grabbed the stretcher and we ran to the emergency room, and we started to stabilize him. And we checked his heart rate, we got his blood pressure up, we made sure he was breathing okay. And when we realized finally that he was going to be okay and he was going to live, we got the story of what had happened to Thor and his partner that day. So Thor and his partner, the cop, had broken up a crime and the suspect started to run away. So the cop and Thor took off after the suspect, but they were losing ground and the suspect was getting away. So the cop reached down and he unhooked the leash of Thor and Thor took off after the suspect and he started gaining ground. But at that point, the suspect, we didn't realize, had a gun, pulled it, he aimed it and he shot Thor. And he shot him in the forearm and he shot him in the chest. And Thor went down and there was blood everywhere and he couldn't get up. But in the time that that scuffle had happened, the cop caught up to the suspect. And the suspect again raised his gun to tr try to shoot the cop. And Thor looked up and he saw what was happening and he dragged his body up and he took that suspect down. And it is for these dogs that we realize right now we got to do something. Exactly. can we do? How can we give back to these animals who give to us so selflessly? About 10 years ago, all the veterinary ophthalmologists in the country banded together for the month of May. And we said, if we could give free eye exams to try to pick out problems before they turn into really big problems, we would love to do that. So for 10 years, the month of May, free eye exams, I am proud to say we have given out 60,000 free eye exams to these amazing animals. Thank you, guys. This But now, it's about here, it's about today. This is your chance. 
So dream the thing that inspires you. Think of things you love to do. If it's animals, fantastic. Go volunteer at a local shelter. Or maybe you and your family can raise a puppy for seeing eye for the blind. Or even more simple, maybe one of your neighbors or your relatives has recently broken their leg or they just don't feel well but they have two dogs. You and your friends can organize a dog walking schedule and you can help that neighbor out. But most importantly, start right now. Dream your dream and jump into it. Everything and anything you guys do can make a difference and I cannot wait to hear about you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Oh, uh, great. By our students, so I'm just going to ask you one. You bet. What's your favorite thing about your job? Uh, how can I list one? You guys have just seen so many. You know, I think my favorite thing about my job right now is that I work at the University of Pennsylvania and I get to teach students to become vets. So to see that amazement and wonder for the first time that somebody gets to do a surgery all by themselves or they get to um, recognize a problem in the back of the eye all, them, all by themselves, I think to me that's the most rewarding part right now, watching people become vets so that more and more people can help these amazing animals. Thank you for paying it forward.